you're starting. Are you coming? Yeah, 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 sure. Can't start without a snack. All right. In the chapel. Job 510. I, I was wondering if I should do 510 or 376. Because if I could prove to RJ that snow is a good thing and in the Bible. Don't shake your head no at me. Snow is a good thing. <laughs> He's just over there going. <laughs> he doesn't want to say it. Okay, so we'll just do both. So Job 510, uh, he provides rain to the earth and sends water on the countryside. He has definitely done that this week. Um, then there's Job 37.6. He says to the snow, fall to the earth and to the rain showers, be a mighty downpour. So, snow is a good thing and a blessing. He's just... Not in Oklahoma. He says not in Oklahoma. Curse. It's a curse. <laughs> anyway, okay, so in the chapel, as you can tell, we've had our fair share of rains um, this week. Technically, they can't. They can't yeah. see the rain. Do what? So they can't see the rain. Not in the chapel. They have to go outside. Oh my gosh. Okay, so apparently you can't see the rain from inside the chapel. You have to go outside. So apparently our in the chapel section doesn't have windows. Right? Well, don't you have curtains over the windows? Not all churches have curtains over the windows. Anyway, all right, moving on. Hello. Oh, we didn't even do an introduction because I was fighting with you. Hello, welcome to Straw Family Farm. I'm Christy, and you are? Ice cream man. Getting ice cream. <laughs> so, just call him ice cream today. All right, so, in the barn stalls, what do we got going on? The biggest bowl of ice cream ever. In the barn stalls. Anything? Yes? Yes, yes we do. What do we have in the barn stalls? Talk to me about the filly. Oh, she or ran. actually talk to them. All right, so during the storm this week, um, we woke up to a frantic call from your sister, correct? Yep. Some stuff had blown in her pen or whatever. Um, we're not sure what happened, but she was standing in the middle of her stall holding the horse's hooves because, or hoof, because when she let go, blood gushed everywhere, right? Uh -huh. All right, so she calls here. I stayed on the phone with her, and you boogie boogie boogied up there. Mm hmm and made record time. I think he was speeding, but we're not going to go into that. Um, what did you find when you got there? Uh, she cut the back of her foot. So, we patched her up, and sister uh, took care of her. So. Yep, so um, got the bleeding stopped, that kind of stuff. It wasn't a very big cut. No. And just a well-placed cut. Mm -hmm. So... You never know what's going to cause a horse to bleed a lot and what's going to cause them not to bleed at all. Um, around the hoof, you always run the chance of uh, messing up the cornea band, correct? Mm -hmm. So, um, been there, done that, don't want to do it again. All right, then you came home and what was going on here? Uh, I was headed to work. Yep. And... I got home and found one of our horses was in the neighbor's pasture. Okay. And how did she get there? She believes she can fly. Yep. I um, believe I can fly. Because of the storm. I want to touch the sky. Are you done? I can't remember any more of the lines, so I am done. <laughs> okay. I believe I can fly. I want to <laughs> touch the sky. I believe I can fly. No, no, no. It's... I believe I can fly. I want to touch the sky. Are you done? You're done. That's not a question with Steve. You're done. Um, so she uh, tried to jump the fence. She mm -hmm. is less than two years old. Um, and she cleared four out of the five strands, correct? Yep. So she might be a jumper. That's okay, because most jumpers, once they're trained, don't jump the fence. But in the process of miscalculating, you, you, 
you saw the the stuff and it kind of looked like she tried to stop stop but then couldn't so just she's a thinking horse so she jumped over um if she had committed to it she probably wouldn't have done anything to herself correct probably but what happened as a result of her non-committal to the jump she cut her shoulder and her back leg okay now they're pretty deep cuts first off yep so the front one can it be stitched yeah. why not <coughs> <coughs> Because every time she uh, goes to moving around, it's going to tear them stitches and, up. Okay, how trained is she? These are the horses we just got home. Not very. Like barely six weeks ago. She's barely halter broke, barely pony broke. Mm -hmm. um, it was kind of comical getting her home. Correct. Yep. So, um, but, so you can't stitch up the front one because the vet says she'll just end up tearing them out every time she fusses. Um, that's creates more scar tissue and keeps it from healing properly so sometimes it's better to do nothing um, we've been doctoring them every day though well and we'll get to that uh then on her back leg can that be stitched no because it moves too okay it's vertical along her back hock right mm -hmm. there's not a whole lot of anything to stitch it to correct mm -hmm. Back there, it's just kind of skin in that. So, we have a product product here in Oklahoma. It is not nationwide, is it? You might be able to get it nationwide. Nope. Probably not in California. Well, not. It's too highly regulated. It's a made in Oklahoma product, and it's called Underwoods. Mm -hmm. Correct. It's probably available online, or they used to have it available online. But here, it's. You might be able to get it. We don't know. It's available here. It's available here, and it is a local made product here in the state of Oklahoma. So it's really, really good, though. Yes. It's and better than what do you do? Cream. You just spray you that on it. Shake it up because the two parts separate. Mm -hmm. It's a two-part thing. It separates, so you shake it up. Mm -hmm. You spray it on with a trigger nozzle, mm -hmm. and then what do you put on it? Baking powder. You actually just throw baking powder at it, and where it sticks, it sticks. Correct. Mm -hmm. So, it uh, actually, we used the same product when Angel laid her head open mm -hmm. and her skull was showing. Because mm -hmm. they couldn't stitch there either, could they? Mm -hmm. um, it, you don't wash it up, you don't clean it up, you don't do anything. You let this product work, mm -hmm. right? Yep. So, that's a good thing. Um, but if you can get Underwoods and you are a horse owner, we highly recommend it. Um, now there are cuts. If your horse has a cut that needs stitches and it can be stitched, stitch it. We're not saying not to. Um, we're saying Underwoods is a great product for those places that can't be stitched or that a horse, you know, would rip out or, you know, those kind of circumstances. Because Coop had to go and have stitches when she tore her female parts itching on a t-post um we don't say not to go get them stitched up go and she get got them stitched stitches if you on can. her side one time too yeah and she got stitches on her side so um we're not saying don't stitch we're saying evaluate each case and if your vet says that there's going to be an issue with stitching it you should have some underwoods on hand so it's a great emergency product or if it's not deep enough and it doesn't need oh. stitches it just needs a little tlc yeah if it's it actually makes them heal faster so uh -huh. it's a good thing uh, all right so we had those two right <coughs> in the barn stalls what do we got for calves what are our issues with our calves why are you choking stop that I don't allow choking at my table <laughs> get up here come on okay so what's with the calves I'm trying to pour what's with the calves I'm joking. Okay, I told you I don't allow that here. Come on, let's get done. Come on, I want to get to bed on time. It's been a late night. Come on. Come on. Enough. Okay. <laughs> I was waiting when you slapped me on the back, so you quit joking. <laughs> oh. Okay, okay, okay. You don't have to beat me to death. <laughs> well, all right. So, what's going on with the two calves? Or actually, there's now. three calves. One is getting beat up a lot correct 
Or do you have that? You're playing footsie with me. The dog. <laughs> yep. Um. So we put him in with the sheep, and we're winging in bidet and fuzzy skiff. Okay. So back up. There's a reason we're weaning kids. We normally don't stress them out or anything, do we? The no. moms will kick them off eventually, right? Mm -hmm. And we don't have a big enough herd that mm -hmm. it takes its toll. But Bidet is old and getting older. And this year, Fuzzy has decided she can raise her calf. So, at any given time, how many calves is nurse, are nursing on Bidet? Two. This wouldn't be a problem, except is she a milk cow? No. She's Fuzzy a says, cow. I'll wean mine off. Bidet is like, okay, I'll feed it. Yep. So, it's taking a toll on Bidet. She's a little older. She's actually handled <coughs> really well. But beef cattle, their bodies are not made to produce that much milk to keep two, what, 300-pound calves going? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So... We're weaning for the fact that it's just easier on bidet. Now that we've got them up, Fuzzy is actually out there calling for hers, isn't she? Yep. And she doesn't even have a bag anymore, does she? No. I don't care about you. You can starve to death. You can starve oh, to death. Oh, just but kidding. But you can't stay with me. But you can't stay, stay with anywhere without me. Mean. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I thought if we put uh, Fuzzy up there with her. Fuzzy's a longhorn, by the way, guys. Yeah. Uh... I thought we might have to put her up in there with them because she doesn't have any milk. That would keep them calm, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah kind of, sort of. And teach them to know. eat, maybe. Yeah, I, don't I don't want know. to feed her. She eats a lot. <laughs> that's true. She'd eat more than them, and then they <laughs> wouldn't get anything. Uh, so anyway, that's going on, right? Yep. Holly's kind of getting older and thinner. It's taking its to, toll on her. Yep, because how many is she raising now? Like three. We have grafted... Okay, so we had five baby goats born. We lost Sweetie, so that left two without a mom. Layton had Superman and has a young, fresh bag. So we grafted Lois onto her and found Louie a new home. So we have... Two females raising two sets of twins. Right? Mm -hmm. That's not how it worked out, is it? No, sweetie. I'm okay, so every morning we go in and we put Leighton in the stand and we don't milk her. We put Lois and Superman on her to drink. Mm -hmm. Now, um, she gets the sensation of separating them, her bag filling, filling each night, us going in and putting her in the stand. And then I have milked her, and I'm going to go back to milking her after the goats are weaned. But for right now, those two get to go up there. It's the only way that she really lets Lois nurse, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct? So Lois gets her breakfast from uh, Layton every morning. Now, then we milk out Holly and put her milk in the fridge... And we feed a bottle to Lois of Holly's milk every night. But whenever you look out there, son, what's going on? Mm, she's stealing. From her mom? From Layton, who we grafted her onto? No. Who's she stealing from? Well, Holly. Will you stop it? I'm looking through my little print. See, look, look at that. I look these two oh my god, I'm gonna give him a big crack here in a minute. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay, so um, anyway, that's going on. It's taking its toll on Holly. So we're getting ready to um, pull the babies just because I think they're eating enough, aren't they? Mm -hmm. We're right at it. But we're gonna put them separate from their moms, and I will go to. Milking out Holly for a little bit and letting her dry up as quick as I can. And then Layton will be my milker through the summer. I'll milk her. With the squirrely pattern. So, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Anyway. Doesn't so that's over. going on. Then. Look, guys. I made a squirrely pattern right in that corner. See it? 
So if it's really bad. They can see it. If they? you just I know if you hold it still they see it. See? The black lines make a swirly pattern. Okay, done. It's it didn't focus all the yes, way. Yes it did. It did not. It's good enough. Okay, so that's all for in the barn stalls you think? Mm -hmm. Right? <laughs> that's all for in the barn stalls? Yep. All right, mending fences. Literally. What were you, what were you mending today? The fence. Mm-hmm, what fence? The one by the road. The north fence. Yep. What well, was having issues with the north fence? The goats kept poking holes in it. Poking holes. They ripped the whole thing down. Forget the holes, okay? The fence was intact, laying on the ground, post sticking up this way, fence laying down here. Well, Correct. They made a little hole. Yeah, the whole length of the north fence. All right. Okay, so in other words, they just took the fence down. And then early. the dog pen, yep. it got cleaned out and yep. taken care of. Tomorrow's going to be the chicken coop, right? Yep. Okay, and then we got to get in there and clean the barn. We've got stuff going on that we got to tell them. All right, so anything else mending fences? Did we fix anything else? No? Yes, yes, we did. What? That one thing. No. I wasn't going to say that one thing. What? I was going to say that thingy major. Uh-huh. Okay, so in the yarn farm, we did Pioneer Days, right? Yep, you did. I did. How'd it go? Tell us all about it. Extra, extra, read all about it. I Wait. met a lot of nice people, and pretty much it was the same thing. Just, you know, it wasn't as organized as I would like. I try to support community, but I find that communities... And RJ and I kind of do this. When we go up to Wamego, we love going to Wamego. We do a lot of stuff for them. We love supporting that, correct? We would bend over backwards to support Jennifer. She is organized. You pay your money. She has all your stalls. She has it taped off. When you walk in, you know where you're going. You know what you're doing. And if you've been there in the years past, you don't even stop and ask her where it's at. You just know. You know where your classroom is. She's got everything posted. She's got schedules, she's same got time, a web same page. Place, same well, deal. she's got a web page she updates from year to year. The work she does it all. Now she doesn't do it all, okay. She does it with um, some help. She's got two or three people that help her every year. Okay. Will you stop? And this is the way most venues are run that we attend. They're just uh, boom, 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 boom. Um, everybody knows what they're doing and everybody does it and everybody supports everyone else. The little local ones seem to be the ones that I have the most trouble with the disorganization with. Oh, look, see, going the other way, it doesn't make such a nice thing. So, anyway, I didn't even know. We were there for educational purposes and they had not even told me what time I was supposed to go home. So they were clearing the streets, and half of us were standing there going, well, is it over? Do we go home? What are we doing? And so, yeah, it was, but it wasn't just me that didn't know. It was, like, the whole section of our street <laughs> didn't know. So, anyway, um, we had that going on. It was okay. We have schools starting to come and set up schedules, correct, in the yarn farm? Um, what else is going on? Things should be out in June, right? Mm -hmm. We're looking for that Tulsa magazine. Uh, we were approached about Sunfest, but unfortunately, there is no way to get in to Sunfest right now. Uh, the lady asked me to put in an application, but uh, according to the website, they're not taking them after like February 24th of this year. So um, she was telling me how to do it and blah, blah, blah. I might go over and visit Sunfest and see what it's all about. I don't know. <laughs> I got the joke of the day. <clears throat> Cowboy's getting his bull out of his neighbor's pasture. Mm -hmm. He says, my neighbor says he's going to sue us because this Corrini bull got in with his registered Angus cows. I saved him the trouble. I gave him my seven cents and my pocket knife. <laughs> Say. <laughs> That's about the way a farmer's life is. <laughs> yep. You guys go you guys a little horn bull rope to the cartoon. 
All right. <clears throat> Anything else in the yard farm? I got a funny comic. We're working on some other intern programs that we really can't talk about right now because they'll call, um, they'll involve counselors and confidentiality clauses, right? Nothing. Um, anything else? We could save up to fifty dollars by switching that to Geico. That business. I was gonna say by switching to Geico. <laughs> Geico didn't go into business. <laughs> we don't support any insurance. Find your own insurance, okay? He's just mouthing. Um. We don't have Geico. No, we don't. We have farmers. All right, so farm bureau, not farmers. Farm bureau. We don't support any. They don't pay us for an endorsement. We're done. Um. Uh, okay. So what's next in the field? I'm practicing my salesman tactics. On the wrong products. In the fields, what do we got going on down there? We have got more onions. If anybody is local and wants walking onions, come get onions, them. Onions, onions for sale, folks. Oh we my will gosh. sell them for, for you. Buy the bushel, buy the pound, buy the whichever, you, buy the onion if you want. Just come get them. Just They're for sale. Hey, I'm trying they, to sell they them. They are okay. for sale. We normally sell them for two dollars a bunch, but if you're gonna come and dig them yourself, we will sell them to for a you dollar. a dollar a bunch. Yep, but you have to dig them yourself. And there's a ton of them out there. So they have exploded outside the bed. I actually mowed part of them down and they're already starting to come back. <laughs> so <laughs> I need those ones that I mowed down dug up and they can be replanted someplace to make some somebody else a, a onion bed. So um, remember that these onions are Egyptian walking onions. They're like small little pearl onions, but they start coming out in Oklahoma in February and they last all year long. So um, they'll be under the snow sometimes. When we have snow in December and November, they'll be under that snow. So we have onions go No, we don't get snow. No, nope, yes, we're not we gonna get any snow. No snow. <laughs> Never ever again are we gonna get snow. Never, it's Oklahoma. Ever, ever. We're gonna get snow tomorrow. <laughs> We're not getting snow. Okay, so um, anything else in the fields? I still don't have the the vertical tower. Shh. Not the day after that. Shh. Or the day after that. Stop it. The vertical tower still isn't planted. I've got to get that done. Um, Or I'm not going to have anything planted. It's kind of starting to run late, so I'm going to get seeds in the ground, I hope, this week or next weekend. So... Um, anything out? The mint is back. Some of my herbs didn't come back. My thyme didn't come back. I'm, and my rosemary didn't come back. I'm just, nope, thyme yeah. only comes by once. Sage came back, and I didn't get. One time. I think lavender didn't come back. There's like three of them that didn't come back that were supposed to come back. So I'm going to rethink what containers are in and replant them. It's amazing your thyme didn't come back. It only comes around one time. It's T H Y M E. It's a spice herb. All right. In the farmhouse, what did you get done this weekend? Not God much. knows I've been having my own issues this week. Not much. Went to a couple rodeos. One seven. Seven. That's all seven. I want. That's all I won this week. Broke the barrier. We need to figure out a way to slow coop down, don't we? Or give her a longer score. Bad time about that. Or get her a longer score. Correct. She just. I mean, a shorter score. She uh, definitely is in high speed, isn't she? Yep. She's feeling good. She's primed, ready to go, and she's taking off. Um, When we talk about the score, that's the length that of a head start that you have to give the calf, Mm -hmm. and she is going too quick and getting a ten-second penalty, so it's knocking him out of the money. Well, it wasn't our fault. I turned her loose. Well, and it's timing. The horse has to know what it's doing. The rider has to do what he's supposed to do. Yeah. Yep. It's called the left hand. Yep. Anyway. Drop it when you want to go. Yep. And I dropped it too soon. Mm -hmm. Kind of like the little dude that gets hung up at the race cars when he starts, false starts too soon, he gets hung up at the gate. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, anyway. All right, so I had some issues to, that are kind of funny this week, right? That's him. Okay, so I was raised overseas, and not everything translates, and not everything commute. It takes too much thinking up here to sometimes get it out of my mouth in American. That makes sense because it and gets she's all jumbled years sometimes. Old still yeah. having these problems. Okay, so I put to you, <laughs> you. <laughs> service your dishwashers, you service your cars, you service 
you even call a service man, you can service the fridge, you service everything. But when you talk about your home, you don't service your home, you maintain it. Really, people? Somebody want to explain this one to me? One word, one meaning, one use, uniform. Why do we have to have two words for this? And in the context that it was being spoke, which I was made fun of, because I asked when the last time the house was serviced, because they were changing things, okay? So they were having the siding redone on the house, and I asked when it was serviced. Big funny thing, okay, so you apparently you don't service it, you maintain it. But if you're replacing the siding with the same siding, okay, and just doing that, that's maintenance. But if you change the siding, it becomes remodeling. Now, in the English language, if you put the RE on something, it means you're redoing it, right? So if you don't model a house, you build a house, why would you remodel a house? How do you even model a house? Where did the remodel come from? You get some clay and then you build it. But you build it, you don't model it. So how can you remodel it? Just rebuilding a house, I mean, that sounds dorky. Unless there's not a house there. Okay, but if you would just use the word service, blanket, uniform, like most people do. Why do you do? have to make English, I mean, hard, Mom? I don't! Just English is hard. Because, let me tell you, okay, so German, the word out and off are the same word. Aus. A-U-S. They're both negatives. If it's a positive, like in or on, it's auf. So yes, we use math, negative and positive, in our language. But you know what? What genius decided you had to be able to do math? To speak German. That explains why it's I can't not just speak German. <laughs> that explains why it's... It's just negative and positive. Right, it's still math. Whatever person decided numbers and letters go together probably created algebra too. They should be shot and hung in the streets. I knew that one was coming from I mean, really. That's why I held off taking that out there. But what I'm saying is American does not have to have 50 different words for the same meaning. Yes, we do. Why can't you just have one word? Because then the Webster's Dictionary would be a little bitty. <laughs> yes, Webster would be out of a job. Yes, he would. Well then, okay, so I said... And what fun would a game of Scrabble be after that? That's true. So, then, another issue I had was I said something about having linguistic issues. They just looked at me and said, I don't know about that, but we definitely have communication problems. <laughs> Yep, linguistic issues is communication problems. Same thing, just big words. Okay, so when I was talking to someone, I used the phrase beat feet. Now, if anybody out there has ever heard that phrase or ever used it, apparently I grew up using that phrase, and I'll use it in context here in a minute. My children know what it means, but upon asking them, they've never used it and no one else they know has ever used it. But apparently when I get stressed or tired, I just revert back to things that I used as a child. And so anyway, okay, so I was telling about the storm. I talked about Colleen and she had to leave Jerry with Jake and beat feet to uh, Tucker because he's like a sixth grader and he was by himself and there was a tornado coming. So I looked up and I said, yeah, Colleen just beat feet over to Tucker's and she was fine. And they looked at me and said, they did what? And I said, beat feet. And all I can think is the boxer when they do quick feet, you know, that exercise, it, beat feet, go fast, hurry. So when somebody asked me what that meant, because I was talking about this conversation with this person, and I said, yeah, I use the word beat. They are like, what's that mean? I said, make haste. I've never even heard that. Okay, this lady looks at me, she goes, what century were you born in? So 
So apparently, my grandmother used to use that, make haste. It means to hurry, but it's faster than hurry. It's like, hasten. I, I don't know, it's just... And see, this again is American language, because if you guys would have stuck to one word, make haste, or hasten, or hasted, instead of putting in the word no. quick, quickly, and all that, or hurry it up, you don't need hurry, I haste, think you got and quick for the like same word. Eighteen hundreds dictionary. <laughs> you need an upgraded one with like the words people use today. <laughs> My grandmother used to to See, make that's haste. That's the problem. You're still talking like and, your grandmother. And there's actually a phrase about haste makes waste, which means if you do things super fast, you waste more because you have to go back and redo because you what if you're just that good anyway good so apparently getting things from here out of here in a way that people can understand it this week has been an issue for me if it's anybody not. knows where that phrase beat feet comes from um Please let her know, because she's doing Yeah, because I actually called my mom, and I was like, Mom, and she's like, I don't know, we've always just always said it. And I said, well, who started She says, I don't know, we've just always said it. So apparently her parents said it, my parents said it, I say it, apparently not often enough, because my kids are the only ones that know what it means, Right? But when I asked somebody, and I actually, um, I have a friend who's an army brat. We didn't, we weren't in the same places we met after we both got married and moved here. She's an army brat and I'm an air force brat. And we're good friends. And I asked her, I said, is that a military term? Oh, and the whole food board thing too. Uh, and I said, you know, sometimes I have trouble getting things out of my mind out of my mouth in a way that people understand and she says I've never heard. and I asked her I said was that military that would beat feet and she goes we never use that she says although it's really cool and she now wants it to be um, a trend or around Noada she wants to make it like the word instead of saying hurry it up she says I'm gonna start saying that beat feet she says I like that beat feet hurry it up beat feet so but I've always told my kids beat feet you know get your chores done beat feet hurry it up I've never even put the hurry it up on it. It's like, beat feet, do chores. Beat feet, do that. He's heard it. He knows what it means. And I don't know. I guess we never really thought about it. You didn't. I could care less about it. See, that's the thing. When did you actually stop to think about the words I was using when I told you to do that? Um, A few days ago when you came in the house. Complaining and started that nobody asking. Else. Nobody else knew what it meant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going to make this taller than Eiffel Tower and replica. Okay. Um, the other one is things like foobard, um, fried beyond repair. Who knew that people didn't know that one? Right? Fried beyond repair. Um, Where's that? What's that A? Foo bar. So fried beyond. B er. Oh, I thought it was like an acronym. No. Oh. Okay, it's yeah. just sounded out, and it's foobard. Oh, fried bean over. Okay. I just thought maybe the A meant something was another word, you know? Fried beyond in a, a bound repair? No. A, a it's just the way the B and that. the R sound together. Burr. Oh, it's gonna Fubar. fall! It's gonna fall! It's gonna fall! Don't do that! Don't do that! Oh, it's already coming apart. I know, I know. Come on! <laughs> <laughs> now he's gotta rewind it. I anyway, mean, they like this tall folks. They can't see because it's not high enough in the camera. No, it's really dead. Easy. It's dead. <laughs> but anyway, so I've had a few little setbacks, and I do have two girlfriends that, and Nora was once Susan. I talked to her. The first half of the week when I had a couple of things, I was like, I just can't figure these words out. And, uh... I don't know, 50 years old and you still can't speak English. Well, not apparently Do with the right words. Do you understand me? <laughs> I swear. I'm gonna knock the fire out of him in a minute. <laughs> no words needed. Um, what you say? Can you say that slowly? You used the wrong words. 
<laughs> well, I had one girlfriend tell me that I actually do it quite frequently, and her, she just corrects me and goes on. Um, Susan was just like, yeah, everyone, I'll tell her I can't find a word, and she'll, it's this. Um, or I'll say something and say it wrong, and she says, you mean this. And they don't say anything. And Nora said she does the same thing. And they just don't, they just know that it's the way I talk. And it's, you know. You're quirky. It, there you go, that I'm quirky. And uh, we were laughing because I've, I'm around different people now with my job. And they're not used to it. So one instance this week, it hurt my feelings because I just knew I had the word service right. And they were making fun. And there was more than one people, more than one people, more than one person making fun of me. And, and I was like, shocked. she can't talk. <laughs> and so it was like, really? And I was talking to another gentleman who his aunt is German. And he was telling me that she. I did it again. <laughs> that she. Um, learned all of her English off of German, uh, not German, Disney movies. She said when she moved here, she couldn't speak English very well. So she watched all kinds of Disney movies because she knew what the context was because we have the fairy tales over there. So I told her, I said I was an 80s baby. I said I put on my headset and I still do it today. Music. I listen to a lot of music and that's where I get a lot of words and so. That's why it's all jacked up. She listen to weird music. <laughs> I was an 80s child, okay? Boy George, um, Technically, Madonna. you weren't a child in the 80s. You were like... I was a teenager. Oh, yeah, right. Huh. I thought you were older than that. I graduated in 1986. Yeah. That's it? Yeah. Well, I guess, that, I guess it is 2020 now. Or 2019. It's 2019. Oh, yeah. Anyway, but... Uh, that was still yeah. 40 years ago. Hmm. Uh huh. Culture Club. Then there's ACDC, White Snake. ACDC's not a bad band. And Kiss. Uh, yeah. But I tend to listen to the pop more. So, you know, hey, I learned a lot of things from Weird Al Yankovic. Just eat it. <laughs> Michael Jackson. Um, Cindy Lauper. Okay, yep. folks, we're going on a history lesson down music yep. street. Hey, but here's the thing is, I knew what the words meant, and so I get a I lot of the words from there. I can't understand music, let alone understand the words. Hey, I didn't learn it all from a Disney cartoon. I learned a lot of things from Five Dollar Movies at Wally World and Netflix. That's scary. <laughs> I learned half anyway. my life at the... Yeah, but you grew up speaking English. Yep, I did. Yep. So anyway, that was my big Hence thing. the reason I don't have communication issues. <laughs> no, you don't have communication issues. You have linguistic issues. You have communication problems. Linguistic issues. All right, I've got it tall. I'm going to make it you short. Show it up there before you do it, before you break it. See, this is what he's playing with, trying to make it tall. Mm -hmm. So, anyway... All right, so are we about done? That was my big issue. If anybody knows where the term beat feet is, and I know I'm not the only one in the world that uses that term. There's no way. I didn't make it up or... I think she did first. It's not an invention from if me. you see her on Channel 2 afterwards, <laughs> folks, looking and going, I need anybody with any information on the phrase beat feet. It's just beat feet. You if hurry you see it up. her on CNN... You make haste. If you see her on CNN afterwards, you'll know. She, nobody commented on the video, folks. Hang on, I want to see if I can do it this way. Because I broke it. Okay, here's the thing. Too. Is, if you've ever heard that phrase before, leave a comment below. Please do, it's driving her crazy. This happened like Monday of last week. This is Sunday. Tuesday. No, the storms were Tuesday, so it okay, was Thursday. Okay, so Tuesday of last... It's been four or five days, folks. It has. I even called my mother over this. I, I did not you. invent this. My children think I did. They're like, just you, Mom. Just you. No. It is not. It, there's 
I don't know. Somebody else out there has heard the phrase beat feet. I'm not saying they have. Beat feet is to hurry it up, to make haste. Quick, quick. Schnell, schnell. Schnell is German for fast. I'm going to have this thing as long as it'll be. All right, guys. Hang on. Hang Enough on. I've got fussing. 20 more inches. Hang on. Nope, I it's wanna... 40 minutes in. No, it's hang time on. I want to get show it over with. I want to show them. Just Hurry hang. it up, then. It's almost done. It's almost done. Let's see how tall it'll stand. Here it's a go. unicorn horn. Okay, but you got to put it up. They can't see it. Here, I can put it down. There it is. Freestanding. Yeah, and it's leaning backwards, so it's the leaning tower of Pisa. Turn in. No, and it could be the leaning tower of Pisa. See? Turn it sideways. There we go. No, you want it to lean. <laughs> I was going to go like this. All right, we're off of here. We will see you all next week. And we're going to try um, and get some footage out here of something going on. We're going to go back to trying to get posted twice a week. So, right? That means RJ's going to have to do a two-minute video every Wednesday or so, right? I'll take two minutes just to figure out what I'm videoing. Yep, pretty much. Yeah, All right, we'll catch you next video. time. It'll be two minutes of just dorkiness. People like you being dorky. I don't know why. Because you have linguistic issues. <laughs> yeah, they can't understand me. <laughs> You're like, yeah, oh, what's he doing All now? All right, we're going to beat feet off of here. From Hey, that's what we can do is we can just make that our ending. We're going to beat feet, and we will talk to Peace you later. Peace out, Girl Scouts. I'm sticking with that one. <laughs>